Hi all, today we are going to discuss about the loading effect of the instruments. So what is loading effect? So the incapability of measurement system to faithfully measure the input signal in an undistorted form is called as loading effect. So why the loading effect happens? The loading effect occurs due to extraction of energy from the measurement thereby distorting the original signal. So this distortion can be either in the form of attenuation. Attenuation means distortion in the magnitude of the signal or that waveform can be distorted that means wave shape itself can be distorted or there can be a phase shift also. We are going to discuss all these effects one by one in detail with the detailed derivation. So what is the example for this one? Let us assume I there is some uh, system is there where the current that is passing is very less. So in that case, if I want to measure using an ammeter, let us assume I have connected a milli ammeter in the circuit to measure the current because this every ammeter, because any instrument that you connect will have some resistance. So that resistance will immediately affect the current that is passing in the circuit. That means same thing I have mentioned here, milli ammeter will introduce additional resistance in the circuit and hence change the flow of the current by a significant amount. This is one of the example for this. So the loading effect may occur on effect of both electrical and mechanical elements of the measurement systems. So these electrical and mechanical elements I can represent in the form of the impedances. So that's why I am calling this as these are due to impedances. They can be either electrical or mechanical of various various elements connected in the system. Whatever the mechanical elements are there, they also can be represented in the electrical equivalent in the form of impedances. So let us see one by one what are the effects. So these effects can be either in the form of due to the shunt connected elements or series connected elements. So let us start with loading effect due to shunt connected elements. So the voltage measurement, displaying, recording instruments such as voltmeter, oscilloscopes or strip chart recorders, generally these devices are connected across the circuit or they are connected in parallel with the circuit. So to understand this, I am taking one circuit. Let us assume there is some source having a supply voltage of V and it is connected to some circuit like this having an impedances Z1, Z2, Z3 and some Z4 let us take for example. So I want to measure the voltage across the points A and B. That means I want to measure the voltage across the impedance Z2. So I have connected a voltmeter across this impedance. So in order to analyze this easily, this entire circuit excluding this voltmeter can be represented by using the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. So Thevenin's equivalent circuit you have already studied in basic electrical engineering. Thevenin's equivalent circuit will be so across these two terminals, what will be the open circuit voltage and what will be the open circuit impedance? That means impedance across these two terminals that I can represent by Z0. So I want to measure the voltage. So that I am representing by E0 in series with Z0. So under normal or ideal conditions, the voltage across your terminals A and B will be equal to E0 only. So now I am connecting one instrument to measure it. That means this instrument is connected across the terminals A and B. Let us assume the impedance of this instrument I am representing by ZL. This L I am keeping the reason is it is having the loading effect on the system. So that's why I am keeping as ZL. So please don't confuse with the load impedance. So now I am taking let the actual voltage across the terminals AB is equal to E0. So this can be found by using Thevenin's equivalent circuit and let the impedance of the measuring instrument I am taking as ZL. So when the voltmeter is connected across these terminals, let us assume this voltmeter is connected across these terminals. So this voltmeter also will draw some current. So as it is drawing some current, automatically the circuit characteristics will change. That means the voltage across these terminals A and B will not be equal to E0, it will change to some value EL. So let us assume I am representing this actual value of the voltage by connecting this instrument I am representing by EL. So I can calculate the value of EL will be equal to I EL multiplied by ZL or I can write this EL is nothing but because the same current IL is taken from here. So I can write this EL as E0 minus IL into Z0. E0 minus IL into Z0. Getting it? Same thing I have written here. Or from these two, if you are comparing this, I can write E0 will be equal to IL into Z0 I have taken to the second side. This will become IL into ZL plus Z0. Agree with me? So let us take the ratio of the actual voltage that is EL divided by the ideal voltage that means E0. Because of introducing the instrument, we are getting the voltage of EL there, but actually it should be equal to E0 only under ideal case. So if you are taking the ratio, we know EL is equal to IL into ZL from here. 
So I have written I L into Z del and E naught I have calculated from this equation E naught is I L into Z del plus Z naught. So from this I can simplify I L I L will cancel out this Z del I can take to the denominator this will become 1 plus Z naught by Z L or from this I can write the actual value of the voltage E L will be equal to ideal value multiplied by 1 by 1 plus Z naught divided by Z L. So if you want your voltmeter should measure this El should be equal to E naught. When it this will be possible? When this entire set value is equal to 1. So when this will be equal to 1? When the ratio of these two, this is approaching 0. Or when the value of ZL is far far greater than Z naught. So I can write Z naught by ZL will be equal to nearly 0. So that's why your value of El will be equal to I naught. So that means if you want to avoid the effect of the loading effect or distortion of the voltage. So, the impedance of the instrument should be far far greater than your source impedance or the Thevenin's equivalent impedance. So, then only we will get undistorted measurement. But generally these value of Z0 and Z0 if you are measuring the AC. So, these are the impedances they depend on the frequency also. So, practically what happens any instrument you take there will be effect of the capacitance also. Generally that capacitance effect will be negligible when you are going for the low frequencies. But as you go for the high frequencies the effect of the capacitance will be dominating. So, because of that capacitance effect what happens the value of the low Load impedance ZL will become very low at high frequencies. So, hence the input signal gets substantially distorted at high frequencies. That means the value of ZL will decrease drastically. When the value of ZL is decreasing, automatically the EL value will also decrease. So, EL will get distorted drastically. So, the measured signal becomes substantially small at high frequency. So, you can see this is the frequency versus the magnitude what is a measured value. So, measured value up to certain range the effect is less. After that once the frequency becomes very high there is will be a drastical change in the value of the measured value. This is because of the capacitance of the meter dominating at high frequencies. So, similarly there will be this capacitance is going to affect the wave shape also. How it will going to affect the wave shape? Because we know the capacitor takes some finite time to charge because of the effect of the capacitance. If your supply voltage or supply waveform is non sinusoidal waveform, then it will get distorted like this. So, you can see here. So, in the both sides it is getting rounded off. It is not coming as a rectangular, it is rounding off because due to the effect of the capacitance. So, if your supply voltage is sinusoidal, then effect will not be there. But if your supply is non sinusoidal, in that case there will be effect, it will distort your waveform also. So, that is the second effect as well as because of the impedances, even the phase also will change because of introduction of those impedance. So, similar way the loading effect can be due to the series connected instruments also. So, series connected instruments are generally used for measuring the current. So, for that again I am taking an example, there is a voltage source, there are some interpedances, let us assume I want to measure the current that is passing through this point AB. So, across this AB I have connected an ammeter. So, if you want to measure the effect of these adding this instrument. So, this can be easily be analyzed by going for the not an equivalent circuit and it will be much more flexible instead of going for the impedance if you go for the admittance it will be very easy to analyze. So, that is why I am representing using the not an equivalent across this terminal AB. This I can write as a not an current which is nothing but ISC and in parallel with so, the value of ZTH, 1 by ZTH will be equal to YTH or Y0. So, this value of the Y0 is nothing but 1 by Z0. Getting it? So, similarly, this is my instrument. When the instrument is not connected because the current passing between this terminus AB will be equal to I0. That means, under ideal conditions or normal conditions, let us assume I0 is passing through your circuit. So, in order to measure this, I am connecting one instrument, one ammeter is connected. So, that ammeter, so I am representing by the admittance, that admittance by YL. So, this YL will be equal to 1 by ZL. So, I am representing by this one. So, let us see when this instrument is connected, that means YL is connected there because what will be the effect of this one. So, whenever this YL is connected, that I0, let us assume I0 is changed to I L. So, what is this value of I L? So, I L if it is impedance in a parallel circuit, we know impedance in parallel circuit will be I into other impedance by total impedance. That means I naught into Z naught divided by Z L plus Z naught or if you are representing in the form of admittances in parallel circuit. So, in parallel circuit admittances the current will be equal to current multiplied by that admittance divided by 
total admittance. Even you can replace here z0 by 1 by y0 and z del by 1 by yl, you will get the same equation. Because some of you may be confusing between impedances and admittance, that is why I have derived here. So, from this, I can simplify the value of il will be equal to i0, this yl I am taking to denominator, it becomes 1 plus y0 divided by yl. So, il will be equal to i0 divided by 1 plus y0 by YL. So, if you want this IL should be equal to I0, that means instrument should not introduce any distortion. So, that is possible when the value of Y0 by YL is equal to 0. When this is possible, the value of YL should be far, far greater than Y0. That means the admittance of your measuring instrument should be far, far greater than admittance of your source. So, in that case, the current will not be distorted or in terms of impedance, we can tell the impedance of the instrument should be negligible when compared to source impedance. So, in that case, so distortion will be less, otherwise there will be a distortion. So, to understand this further, I am taking one numerical. So, a DC circuit can be represented by an internal voltage source of 100 volts with an output resistance of 100 kilo ohm. That means, I am trying to represent this one here. So, this is given. So, there is a this equivalent one they have represented by 100 volts. This is in series with 100 kilo ohms. This is what is mentioned. So, in order to achieve the accuracy better than 99 percentage of the voltage measurement across its terminals, calculate the resistance of voltage measuring instrument. So, let us assume the voltage measuring instrument that resistance I am representing by Rm. It is connected across these terminals. Ideally, you, you should get the value of 100 volts. But practically, they are telling there is an accuracy of 99 percentage. That means, accordingly, we can calculate the voltage. So, then we will calculate the value of Rm. So, this is given in some competitive exam. Let us see how to solve this one. So, we know the value of the measured value of the voltage will be equal to E0. That means, the ideal value of the voltage divided by 1 plus R0 divided by Rm because we have written as Z0 by ZL. So, here measurement instrument, so I am writing by Rm. So, this I can write as the ideal value of E0 will be equal to 100 divided by 1 plus the value of R0. So, R0 is equal to 100 kilo ohms divided by we do not know the resistance of measuring instrument. So, let us take it as equation number 1. So, second one it is given the accuracy is 99 percentage. So, from this I can tell, so it is given measured value with 99 percent accuracy. So, the value of Em will be equal to E0 into 99 percent that means 99 divided by 100 because we know measured value will always be less than the ideal value. We have already seen in the equation above. So, that is why I have taken the lower side. So, some of you will get doubt why you are taking in this decreasing side, you can take in the increasing side. The reason is that one. So, Em is equal to E0 into 99 by 100. So, this will be equal to 100 into 99 percentage. So, 99 by 100. So, this will become equal to 99 volts. So, I am taking as equation number 2. So, now I am substituting equation number 2 in equation number 1. So, I can write from equation number 2 and equation number 1. So, I can write 99 is equal to 100 divided by 1 plus 100 kilo ohms divided by Rm. Agree with me? So, from this, I can write, I can cross this one, I can bring this here. So, this will become equal to 100 kilo ohms divided by Rm. This will be equal to 100 divided by 99. This 99 comes here, this comes here. So, this 1, when it comes to the second side, this becomes minus 1 this becomes minus 1. So, from this, I can write the value of Rm. So, from this, I can write the value of Rm is equal to, Rm goes here, this come downwards. This will become 100 kilo ohms divided by 100 by 99 minus 1. Getting it? So, from this, I can calculate this value as 9900 kilo ohms. 9900 kilo ohms. You can see here the instrument value, the impedance is 9900 kilo ohms. It should be very high when compared to 100 kilo ohms. So, it is 100 that is 9900. So, nearly 99 times this one is there, then only you are getting this much accuracy. If you want to get 100 percent accuracy, it should be equal to 
infinite. So in this way, there will be a loading effect because of this resistance of your instrument. So loading effect will be there. Let us assume if your measured measurement that instrument having a impedance less than this much. Let us assume it is having only thousand ohms, for example, or one kilo ohm. So in that case, it will drastically affect your measured voltage. So measured voltage will drastically affect. So I hope the loading effect is clear up to now. So next class we are going to take two more numericals which are given in previous IES exams related to the loading effect and the errors so that this concept will be completely clear to you. Because, because of the time constraint I am stopping here because if you want to discuss those numericals we have to take 20 or 30 minutes more. So next class we will discuss those numericals in detail so that this concept will be completely clear to you. If you still have any queries related to this topic, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.